Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we get to take a look at a British SMLE equipped with optical sights. Not telescopic sights, but optical sights. The British, in 1915, distinguished between these two. The British didn't have a sniping program when World War I began. The Germans did. And German snipers quickly uh, convinced the British that the British really needed to have a sniping program too. The well, British then kind of had to rush to come up with scopes and mounts, and how do we do this, and what's the right pattern, and they contracted with a bunch of different companies. And before they were able to really get telescopic scopes, telescopic mounts and rifles into service and into production, they found another option. And this was something that they got off of the competition ranges at Bisley. They're called Galilean scopes, or Galilean optical sights. And the idea is this is basically a telescope without a tube. So there is a little tiny, tiny little lens in the rear sight here, and there's a rather larger lens attached to the front sight here, and looking through the two you actually get about two and a half power magnification with a system that is, you know, you can hold in the palm of your hand. It's this little tiny thing, mount it just right onto the rifles, Easy to ship, easy to attach, relatively cheap. And the British would buy some about like 14,000 of these sites, ship them to Europe, and actually issue them and use them in the field. Now, well, I'll tell you what, before we talk about what happened to them, let, let me go ahead and show you this. This is a, a Martin slash BSA, really it's a Martin uh, Galilean site. All right, we'll start with the front site here. This just sort of clips onto the nose cap of an SMLE. There's a, a cross screw that holds the nose cap in place. This just replaces it to hold that nice and securely in position. There are some markings on this, but boy, they're really hard to see. They're right down on there and over here. And they say Martin of uh, Glasgow and Aberdeen. This was actually one of the smaller contracts for Galilean sites. The most common was the Latte with 9,000 made, uh, next after that was the Barnett with 4,250. Martin did 695 of these that he sold to the, the British government. They were formally added to the list of changes in March of 1915, so relatively early, and they were probably in use actually in the field before that. Alright, so you can see that there's a little round dot inscribed in the center of the site there. That's your aiming point. And of course this isn't just plain flat glass, this is a lens, so you'll get about two and a half power magnification from this. And you look at that through what almost, what at first glance looks like just a rear aperture sight, but that is actually an aperture with another little tiny lens inside it. Now the way that you actually line this up is actually kind of like iron sights. Um, you have the round aperture here, uh, concentric with the round front sight, and the dot in the center is your point of aim. That rear lens is actually part of a larger assembly. It was assembled onto a BSA Model 9C uh, adjustable rear sight. So this was originally like a micrometer adjustable aperture rear sight, and it does some cool stuff like folding. So that folds up, this folds forward, and uh, that kind of gets things out of the way so that this doesn't get, you know, destroyed in transit. And as a result, I can actually show you. So this is your windage adjustment, this is your elevation adjustment. If I fold this down you can get a little bit better view into that. So there is indeed a little tiny lens there. I'll do my best to show you what the sight picture looks like. The camera doesn't quite work the same way as a human eye though. You can see that there is a change in focal point uh, through the lens versus not through the lens. That's about the best I can show you, unfortunately. So this was something that was originally used um, in rifle competition at Bisley. There was of course a, a big hullabaloo when they were first introduced about whether this sort of optical sight was competition legal. And this really is sort of an interesting example of like the push and pull that you get between uh, competition and target shooters versus the military, um, because the military of course is quite interested in marksmanship, and you will often find technology bouncing back and forth between the, the competition range and the military system. So sometimes things like this will transition from you know, the Bisley match field over to actual military use. And you see that 
You still see that today with things like low power variable optics being adopted by the US military, um, you know, citing, citing systems that originally came out of uh, multi-gun competition shooting. So these Galilean sites did not last long in active field service. It turned out they had a lot of problems. Um, perhaps better than iron sights, however they were clearly inferior in a whole bunch of ways to proper telescopes mounted on rifles. So uh, the field of view was very, very small. As small as like 5 feet at 100 yards, really tiny. Um, you had a lot of potential to get dirt on either one of the lenses, or um, poor lighting would have a much worse impact on these than it would on telescopic sights. They were obviously kind of exposed. A lot of, and, and frankly, they're just a little bit hard to use. I wish I could give you guys a better view through the camera of how these actually look in use. Um, it, it, this was actually my first opportunity to finally get a chance to test one of these out. We didn't do any shooting with it, but just in, in the open, in good sunlight, looking at stuff through these Galilean sights, and man, it does actually magnify, but just a little bit. Your aiming point is really pretty hard to see in actual practice, and oof, wow, it honestly, if someone offered me these versus iron sights for a combat rifle, I would have to think pretty hard about which one I actually wanted. Um, so this was an opinion that was fairly widely shared, I think, because these optics tended to get thrown away. As soon as there were scopes available, these things just went away, um, to the point that very few of them survive today. Um, they weren't, it, it's interesting, they were, some things are too big to have been kept as souvenirs. These are kind of too small. These get taken off and then just kind of lost or abandoned. They don't really look like anything. They don't have all that much in the way of markings on them. And they just didn't survive well. So finding them today is quite difficult and they bring huge amounts of money, like embarrassingly huge amounts of money. So um, I am very grateful to the collector who has this one, uh, who gave me the opportunity to bring it out and uh, take a look through it and show it to you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.